Hello everyone, it's Rage and welcome to A Place Forbidden. Now, I was struggling with that one, that last fight from the last episode of Alice Madness, so I figured I would just play a completely different game because I, I was just not getting past that area and I didn't want to not put out anything. So I just figured, you know, why not? Let's just check out this game. I've been... I sit on a few games <laughs> for a little while, so it's... I've had this one for a while and I've been meaning to check it out. And I've been playing the same three games for how long now, so... I felt like I would switch it up a little bit. But yeah, let's get into it. I'm actually not too sure what type of game this even is. I'm just as surprised as you are. Well, this show us how isn't my apartment. Well, that's a great start. Okay, it's pixelated. Pretty, <laughs> pretty depressing. I mean, it's so dead there's flies. That's never a good sign. Uh, can I open drawers? I can. But is there anything in the- was this a waste of time? Yes. Am I gonna do it anyway on the side? Probably. It was, in fact, purely a waste of time. Hmm, handle turns, but I can't open it. Just say that it's locked. Why do you gotta say it like that? I don't know if I like this chair. Nice radiator. Ah, that's actually pretty cool. I thought that, you know, these things would be pixelated as well, but... No, they're actually pretty nice looking. I like that. Visitors? Hmm, it's been empty for a while. Who's V? Just V? Okay, sure. Greetings, visitor. You're more than welcome to sign your name and the date of your visit in this guest book. Once you've done that, we welcome you to explore the library to your heart's content. So long as it isn't after closing. Once you've had your full, please let yourself out. You'll find a key to the front door on one of the desks in the study. Can I... Can I actually type? Or are you lying to me? They appear to be lying to me. No. We don't like dark rooms, so... Ah. Huh. That's probably a graveyard. So that's wonderful. Yeah, actually, it looks like... Looks like a graveyard to me. Computer's not plugged in. Uh, but the ceiling fans are on, apparently. Unresponsive. Why is the mouse on the floor? Another dead plant. Last I remember, I was sitting at home reading a letter from an old friend. But it's the strangest thing. Now I can't remember what it was about or who it was from, I guess. I also don't remember putting anything in my pocket, but I feel something. We'll take it out. Your handwriting is absolutely trash. Room one. You should really clean this place up. Don't lose the trash. Room two. This room makes me wish I had someone to vent to. Room three. I think I'm cracking under the strain. I had the strangest inclination to walk straight into a wall. Oh, first time? Room four. There's a secret path in the dark. Room five. Art really can be illuminating. Huh. Okay. That doesn't give us too much, and apparently I can't walk between tables. Welcome message. Greetings, visitor. We'd like to take a moment to tell you about our wonderful library. The Library of Ouroboros? I hope that's how you pronounce that. Is a state-of-the-art facility designed to replicate the rural charm found in many older buildings without the associated risks such buildings are known to accumulate. The building might seem like a strange sight amongst Wall Street's many towering skyscrapers, but we believe this dichotomy will be what sets us apart. 
We're glad you... We're glad that you've decided to give us a chance and hope that our stock of books will appeal to you. Obviously, our collection of information isn't so vast as to encapsulate the whole of the internet, but we hope that the charming aesthetic design of our library will help you escape from the hustle and bustle of New York life. If you hear any strange footsteps, don't worry. There may still be construction going on above or below you. From us all, thanks again. I don't know how I feel about that. The more I can read. Ah, another welcome message from our staff. Welcome, we're glad you're here. The library is located in a picturesque part of Britain. Atop a grassy knoll east of Sussex. Many rural townships. Didn't they just say that it was located in like a busy section of in New York? Now this one is saying that it's in Britain. That's... Hmm. Okay. Obviously bereft of their own libraries. Prefer their villages to the library. It is beloved by all. Peruse our vast stock of fiction, non-fiction, poetry, and everything in between. Chat with friendly librarians and employees and feel free to spend as long as you'd like reading using our computers or just spending time here. We always love new visitors. Do you hear any odd knocking? In the corners of the building, pay it no mind. The library is on the older side, and the foundation plays tricks on some visitors' minds. Don't worry, though. It's perfectly safe. The staff. Hmm. Suspicious is a page. The tick falls up on blood. A pustule pulses on a dead dog's eye. Like these, your head shall burst. Like these, your head shall burst. Wait, are there more pages around that I haven't noticed? There was indeed no pages for me to find. My phone is ringing, but I don't know how to answer it. I suppose that's it. No. Where's this phone? Ah. There it is. Oh no, that's not the phone. Talk about a blast from the past, all of the phone numbers are three digits too short. This phone is about to piss me off. Long list of books and their dates were checked out. Funny, none of them have the year listed, only months and days. Ah. Ah, there it is. Answer the damn phone. Hello, welcome to the library of Aroboros. Ah, I can pronounce it right. To visit our humble institution. Hopefully, you will find what it is you're looking for. Please be informed that the library is closing. Since most of our staff are currently away, please lock the door on the way out. We hope you've enjoyed your visit. Thank you for visiting the library of Oroboros. That's, that's it. Oh, this is on the other side. Ah yes, the key. Or a key, I suppose. Can I not? Cannot read this letter, no. Um. Oh. Nice. A circular symbol, the snake swallowing its tail. Ah yes, it is a familiar looking symbol. A representation of the endless cycle of death and rebirth. Of wholeness, the infinite, and a certain kind of cloy meaninglessness. Never put much stock in mysticism, but in this place it's well... It's pasted all over the goddamn walls. Tough to avoid that. Last I remember, I was on some occult website, sitting on the farthest end of the internet, past the places that I'd normally dissuade the less curious. I had just a little too much time on my hands. I remember falling asleep and now I'm here. The recording said that this place is the library of Aroboros. I remember reading something about that, but not what or where. If you're reading this, keep an eye out. Something isn't right. How wonderful. Almost all the words are 
crossed out and the pages are stuck together. Can't open any further. Peace be to you, friend. We're glad you've decided to join us. Despite its name, the library is open to all sorts of different faiths. With our vast tracts of religious knowledge, modern, old, and otherwise, we're certain you'll find the peace you seek. We know you've traveled far to arrive here, so please do rest. Keep an open mind, read to your heart's content, and we'll be sure you're well provided for. One matter of note, we ask you to not linger after closing or to descend too far into the library's bowels. Some of our books are quite old and very sensitive to the ingress of foreign temperatures and moistures. Thank you for understanding. Um. Oh, my bad. Doesn't move at all, but feels warm. Okay. Ooh, I don't like that. Nope. Okay. Let's go into this. Huh? This can't be right. Hello. We'd like to inform you that the library is now closed. Note that it is unlawful to remain on the premises after closing. This is your one, and only, warning. But I can't get out now. I just came from here, didn't I? You did. And that's what's concerning. Oh, cute! I can't touch it. Oh, no. They fucked it up. The note is largely obscured by blood. You can only make out a handful of words. In one of the dustier books fell apart in my hands. They were... They were these arcane scribbles. Fields... After I threw it away, still not quite right, like something's watching. Uh, and now you're dead. Scribbles. Not a real word on that page. Uh, a pretty shoddy barricade. Someone must have been desperate. Are you looking at me? Hmm. Oh, another one. Too smudged to be legible. It's always fun. We don't have time for that. On the library, very early into my professorship, a student came into my office one spring afternoon with a stack of papers in her arms. She said she'd been having strange dreams of a place stretching forward and backward into infinity. Dreams of hallways splitting into hallways, dreams of being lost in the intricate guts of some gigantic place that could not possibly exist. On the papers were crude sketches. She was no artist, she said, but something about the dreams had left such a vivid impression on her that putting what was in her brain to page to the page seemed like her only option. She was clearly distressed when I gently suggested that she visit the university psychologist rather than the resident ancient history professor. She violently shook her head, asking if I knew anything about something called an Ouroboros library, or perhaps a library of Ouroboros. It wasn't entirely clear. I told her about the common knowledge about the symbol taken from the Egyptians by the Greeks, and from the Greeks by the medieval Europeans. A sign in alchemy, of death and rebirth and so forth. The student continued shaking her head all through my explanation until she suddenly cut me off. Those are too old, she said. The place from my dreams was modern. There was electricity, computers, but everything seemed ancient and stank of old dust and damp wood and something, something else. Please, don't you know of anything in the recent times that might have stemmed from that idea? I confess that I hadn't especially considering the size and the many niches of the modern world. She left without another word, leaving her drawings behind. Something about the conversation shook me. I looked through the crude drawings made in a shaky hand and saw the familiar shapes and designs. 
an odd air of ominousness, like looking at the facade of a dark building and hearing the slightest scratchings of things that shouldn't be just behind the stones. All very juvenile thoughts, and yet, when I went home that evening, I brought the drawings. I couldn't help but want to look more into what we discussed, into that library of Ouroboros. It was largely fruitless. I found many sites and articles on alchemy, the symbol itself, for the public library in Oberos country, which was located somewhere in rural Wisconsin. But just as the hour crept past midnight, I found something. In the slightest snatch of information at the bottom of a rabbit hole series of links, I will not repeat the site's domain or my steps to arrive there for fear that someone might try to replicate what I did, but I will repeat what I found, because just as that student couldn't get the ideas from her head without drawing, I find I can't think of anything else, waking or sleeping. I hope this will help. The library of Ouroboros, a kind of waking nightmare arrived upon by those too curious for their own good. Rich in black secrets, rich in dark ideas lost to time, rich in languages from dead races on other planets. The fortunate die, the truly lucky, or perhaps the most unfortunate of all, become tenders for all time, knowing far more than any living being could ever hope to learn, without becoming a permanent, perpetually screaming stain on the face of space-time forever. None have left it unscathed. They are forbidden tombs that would prevent you from breathing should you merely touch them. And the tenders of beyond sanity and jealousy keep their terrible secrets. You've searched enough. This is your final warning. That night I slept footfully in my dreams. Beset by images of a dark, dusty place, eerie for its supposed normalcy. I could almost feel things passing by just beneath the floorboards, within the walls, watching me. Every exit led to another room, nearly the same as the one before it, and out the windows I saw only black. My dreams have been constantly disturbed since that night, so much so that it is hard for me to teach, so heavily preoccupied is my waking mind. I hope this writing will be enough to put my mind at ease. One last thing, I've since tried to find the student who first contacted me to tell her what I learned. My hope was that I might be able to put her mind at ease or at least commiserate with her, but I haven't been able to find her. In fact, since the day she visited my office, her roommates haven't seen her, nor has anyone else, and I fear I might be next. Well, shit. The Minister's Doom, Act 3, Scene 2. Bernice enters, followed by... Closely followed by the librarian. Bernice is breathless, looking both exasperated and slightly excited. The librarian's expression is unreadable, per usual. Bernice, but my husband will find out about us. He won't stay out forever. Librarian, I wouldn't be so sure, my dear. But shall we retire to the living room? If we're to speak of such unpleasantness as your husband. Bernice's face suddenly breaks into a grin. She grabs the librarian's hand, taking him onto the couch beside her. Fine then. If you're to stay, I want to hear some of those secrets you've been talking about. You can't blame me for the fool forever. I would never claim to do such a thing, my dear. Would you care to hear about how I can stop a human heart with but a word? Goodness, that sounds dangerous. It most certainly is. I wish to hear it. Then of course you shall. He leans close to Bernice, who closes her eyes, as if expecting a kiss, but the librarian leans past her, whispering something in her ear. Bernice's eyes open wide, she gives a single jerk, a strangled groan, and goes limp, sliding off the couch. Librarian, too curious for her own good. He stands reaching in one of his pockets to withdraw a single black case containing Bernice's wedding ring. Taking a cursory look around the living room, the librarian eventually focuses on a single point on the opposite side. The librarian crosses the floor, leaves his item, and turns to leave, 
As he does so, the scene darkens, leaving only a single spotlight to illuminate the stage. It is fixed on the small black case which the librarian has decided to leave, sitting atop the minister's writing desk. Okay, sure, I guess. Um... Still not moving. Oh. Hmm. Okay. I'll get back to that in a second. Oh. I thought that was a spider. I suppose we have a look around. Oh. Yay. Inventory. Uh, another random mouse. A page. No. Is there a bun or something somewhere? Because, like, we're finding a lot of those. I can't help but feel as if I stand before... The precipice of some terrible reality left one room only to come right back into it. Shame there's no place to go but straight ahead. I've hidden a few tools in this room in case the path ahead isn't what I hope it is. If they're not here anymore, then good news. The path ahead at least immediately is probably safe. Zero chance of any hostile entities. If they're still here though, well I hope they're useful to you. You're going to need all the help you can get. V. I suppose V was the last person here. Same chair from earlier. Hmm, I remember seeing a vent over here. Oh. What be this? Oh. I've gotten some forbidden knowledge. Might even something to jump out at me. It's so quiet. I don't trust it. Also, I need to find some type of combination to the... To this box, but I don't really see anything. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, the... Achievement scared me. Oh. A kind slumber. I've been driving for miles and miles and miles. It's night. I'm tired. So tired. I've been on the road for what feels like days. I don't like this constant moving. Never have. It wasn't this bad when I was younger. Could have slept in the car while my parents drove. Now I don't have anyone to drive me. Two of them got too caught up in some of the darker parts of our world. A black library by our old house. They went in, never came out. They're why I can't sleep. Their book. What I learned without trying as I opened the dusty thing, sitting disused as I cleaned out what remained of the attic. They didn't even mean to, and yet here we are. There have been no other cars for hours. This dark stretch of road. My truck. All I've known. As I drive along, a halo of red and blue neon forms in my windshield. Bastion in the dark. A tiny diner. I'm not hungry, I'm not thirsty, just tired. But all the same, I take the exit as it comes up. Pulling into the parking lot between a beat-up jalopy and a truck that looks a lot like mine. I hardly feel the cold outside, I hardly feel anything. It's like feeling trapped in somebody else's body, and things don't feel like they fit right on my muscles anymore. The diner's just as cold as the outdoors and hardly more inviting. The distressed red pleather of a bunch of booths. It should have been trashed years ago, dirty tables, floors buffed into a mockery of cleanliness. Empty but for a man in a heavy coat in one corner and a waitress in the other. The man is standing. The waitress is also standing. They look like prize fighters about to square off, or they would if they were looking at each other. Instead I can't see the man's face for his collar and hat. And the woman is looking at me. Seat, sir. I nod. Rough weather out. 
she says, trying to smile as I take my seat. I can tell I look terrible. Do you know a place where I can get some shut-eye? I ask. Almost without realizing it, I can't sleep, but maybe I can still try. Not a motel for miles. You can sleep at your table if you want, though. You don't even have to order anything. Thank you, I sit my eyes down on the table. And my eyes don't shut. That black knowledge slithered its way from those stained pages and into my brain, and now it grips my eyelids, forcing them wide. The diner is sideways. I'm like this for a few minutes, then... There's someone else standing sideways in front of me, that man in that coat. His face is a dark red mass. Sleep deprivation. Tired, buddy? I nod. The table is cold against my numb face. I think we can help each other. He reaches toward my face, laying a hand upon my cheek. There's a flicker of warmth that cuts through the fog that swallowed up my head for days. As he withdraws his hand, I see a strip of ragged flesh in it, which he brings to his face. When he lifts his hand again, the flesh is gone. Thanks, buddy. May I take the rest? I nod. The table is cold against my face, and as I finish nodding, he turns my head roughly, grabs at it, pulling away another strip of red. This feeling, the tiredness becomes more pronounced. He doesn't ask anymore. He just takes, each time his hand comes down, a little part of me leaves. But at that point, I don't much care. Take it all. I'd like to rest. The table has turned red like the seats around us. Time passes. Feelings gone. Sleep. The man in the coat takes down his collar, and I see my face looking down at me. Tired, he reaches down into my pocket, pushes up my keys. Rest easy, buddy, he says. And something else that I don't hear. He's gone. It all is. Hmm. Well. I'ma just continue with my mission of throwing these into the bin. Because what else can I do? Hmm. Is there really nothing? There has to be something in this book, right? That's probably the dumbest puzzle I've ever heard. We've given you chances. Ample warning. You proceed, we threaten. Continue on your current path and they will find nothing left of your head. We swear it. For the last and final time, go back from whence you came. But I don't even know how I got here. So what what you want me to do about it? Did it always look this bad here? I don't feel like it did. Time to put my amateur lockpicking skill to the test. I mean, sure, whatever you want. What? Again? I just thought I went outside. No. No, I don't want to. <laughs> Why? I hate pixelated games. I feel like they freak me out so much. Why is the ceiling so goddamn high? The cameras are still watching me. Something about this room is even worse than the last ones. Before, there might have been an odd feeling in the air. A certain untraceable scent. But it at least felt like some way people had been. Here? Something's definitely wrong. I can hear something deeper in this room. Barely perceptible, crying out in pain. Here goes nothing. V. Oh, V, you're probably dead. I feel like this is a good enough place to end it, because... I've been looking around for so long. I'm just... I'm tired at this point. maybe a little freaked out but yeah i think i'm gonna end this episode here well everyone that will be all from me this game is definitely interesting 
I don't know if I'm gonna come back to it or if I'm just, you know, going to get past that area in Alice and end up continuing with that game. But I do like it. I like the art style. I love a good atmospheric horror game. The eeriness is definitely there. Yeah, I'm, it's it's pretty good. I feel like I might come back just to kind of see what's, you know, what's going on and what ending we can get. I don't know if there's more than one ending, but you know, I'm I would definitely come back and explore some more. But for now, that will be all from me. Until the next time. Bye-bye.